Hi everyone, welcome to our series, The Business of Music. This series of videos will take a look at the business side of the music industry by talking to professionals in publishing, copyright, sync, music, film, and television. This episode, we'll head up to Nashville and talk to Nancy Peacock. Having started off in the songwriting world in Atlanta, Nancy transferred up to Nashville back in 2006 and started Washington Street Music Publishing. It has grown to be one of the most respected all-in-one shops for music publishing for television, advertising, video games, and film all over the world. So sit back, enjoy, and learn about the music industry from one of the best. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Thank you for asking me. I got my little cards here <laughs> that are not blue, but they're, they're chartreuse. <laughs> I like the color. Thank you. I'm really interested in hearing how you got started in your career. When I was young, I was studying piano. So I was studying classical piano. And I continued that through, through college. Yeah. And then I decided I was not a performer. And I didn't want to pursue that career. So I uh, switched careers and went into history and, um, and sort of left the music for a while. My father was really concerned, and so he eventually bought me a piano for Christmas gift, yeah. which was very sweet. And then it got me back to playing again, and I had a daughter, and I started working with her when she was young. Um, but still, at that point, I didn't have any, any goal to be in the music industry yeah. at all. Um, so I woke up about 20-some years ago <laughs> at 3 o'clock in the morning, and had a uh, melody in my head. And it was very strange. Um, I was like, what is this in my head? And it was really quiet in the house. So I actually got out of bed and started to go upstairs thinking, oh, maybe it's there. And it wasn't there. <laughs> it was still in my head. Only in your head. <laughs> You're like, I'm not crazy either. I hoped I wasn't, but no. it wouldn't go away. And yeah. I sat in the kitchen and had... Um, some water and I fixed some chamomile tea and I would try to go back to bed and the same melody just kept going through my head. And I finally went over to my piano and thought, I know this melody now, so I'm just going to sort of play it out. And I wow. was playing out the melody and I got out a piece of paper and just started writing the notes because I'd never written music. So I did that and threw the paper in the piano bench and it went away. And I don't know, all in all, before I was seriously writing intentionally yeah. music melodies and things, I probably had 60 episodes like that wow. where I was just channeled with mostly at the beginning film score kind of melodies. Yeah. And they were entire song melodies. They would be like Michelle Legrand's, um, you know, Thomas Crown Affair or yeah. themes from Dr. Zhivago. And that's all classical music. It's a lot of minors, yeah. and it's very moving. And, and, and so it didn't surprise me that was coming out of me, but in a creative way. But I also wrote a, a two-part similar Bach invention, wow. which I was like, oh, my goodness, how is this happening? Yeah. <laughs> and it really wasn't, you know, a two-part invention that wow. wasn't anybody's, so it was mine. And um, so it was just random, and I didn't know what to do because I didn't know anyone in the music business. So I, I thought the only person I know in music was Robert Shaw. He's the head of the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra. And, and I went over to his house one morning to have a heart to heart and told him what was happening and gave him this, <laughs> you know, poor pitiful me and I can't sleep. It just keeps going on and on in my head. And he gave me a wonderful lecture and uh, told me all these statistics about creative people in the world and what a small percentage, small, small percentage ever are channeled like that and just get entire songs or entire melodies or entire lyrics just flowing through you. Just And you look around like, how did, where did this come from? Yeah. It makes you believe in miracles. Yeah. You know? So uh, he told me to uh, not ever come back over and give a little pity party. Yeah. you know, with him. But uh, if I wanted to come back over and show him this music, he would love to hear it. And uh, in the meantime, he said, go get a phone book, Atlanta phone book, and find the Atlanta Songwriters Association and meet people who are songwriters and have them teach you to write the lyrics to all these melodies and just become a member of the music community here in Nashville. Yeah. So I took his advice and so on one of my trips home, I was telling some friends, and they said they knew this guy 
Greg Armbruster, and mm -hmm. that he uh, was working on some musicals, uh, his originals, and also putting on plays of others yeah. in, in this community near here, near Nashville. So I met with him, and I, <laughs> I, t I took a couple of my compositions, and I'll never forget this for anyone new in this business. Uh, I had written them out in pen. And he looked at me, and the very first thing he said was, he went over to his desk, got a pencil, and handed it to me and said, we write in pencil. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> right, because nothing's ever finished. Until it, yeah, you kind yeah. of erase the notes or you change your chord progression <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> and that actually became a kind of a, a, a joke because, uh, not a joke, but just like a, a, a collection so whenever I was traveling around the world anywhere or in a museum or a zoo or an aquarium or whatever, you know, I would get a pencil. And I have I've seen you with them. hundreds <laughs> of pencils, though. Yeah. I have these collections of colorful, unique pencils. As I was here a year or so, I realized uh, there are so many thousands of songwriters here that it's good to know the decision makers in the, in the music industry. And I did that by going to a publishing house and, and asking, you know, to be a song plugger. Oh, wow. So I learned the business of publishing from that first job. Yeah. And I went from that to uh, an independent song plugger. I represent some major writers here in town. And then after working with a lot of these individual writers, I realized I wanted to own some publishing. Um, not having the publishing when you're working with independent pluggers, as an independent plugger, yeah. you have to keep track. If you get the cut, then every quarter you're paid royalties. And so then your songwriter is supposed to give you a percentage of that. And if you climb charts, you get bonuses if you get in the top 20 and the top 10, number yeah. ones. And so it's a matter of collecting all the time and making sure that this is happening. I decided to start the company, and at the, at the beginning it was for country. Mm -hmm. So Washington Street Publishing was the you know the beginning of the country catalog, and some Christian pop Christian and R and B because I had been working with some R and B people in Atlanta before yeah. I moved. Which at that time would have been just it was like the, the days the of, hub of everything yeah, happening. So so deaf and the Tony Braxtons and the L.A. Reid and Baby Whitney Face Houston. And, yes, Whitney was yeah. there, and oh, there were so many people and big producers, just great producers. Yeah. Um, so so I, I had all that going, but at the same time, I started going to the ASCAP Expo, mm -hmm. and I was meeting music supervisors that were on the panels, mm -hmm. and realized what a cool job they had finding all these genres of music to put in the TV shows and film. And I never even thought about it from Nashville because we're such a country-based city, country and Christian yeah. music. So I, I thought, I've got to find songs like this. This is what I want to do. And I slowly continued going to L.A. to conferences, meeting with BMI, ASCAP, CSAC, to have them help introduce me to some of the artists that they rep. Yeah. that were not signed to labels. Yeah. So maybe we could get a catalog going. And we just slowly built the catalog and uh, started our own company. That's amazing. I mean, it, we still had the company, but it shifted to a real focus on sync um, placements for film, TV, trailers, and advertising. We haven't really gone into the video games yet. Which is a whole other... <laughs> Like, that's a whole other arena. I think people think of music as one big giant, mm -hmm. you know, and film and TV music as something. Um, I know a lot of people ask me, and and I took a bunch of questions that from social media people DM'd to just ask in the interviews because I thought mm -hmm. that these are the questions that people ask me. And mm -hmm. I get to sit here with you and, and pick your brain for half an hour. <laughs> so um, people want to know, I think a lot of times, is there... As someone that owns a publishing company and very heavily sync involved and, and sync licensing music, is there a specific sound that, you know, you hear that the one that might sound better than the other or something that's more prevalent or is it just sort of multiple genres? Well, when we're actually looking for songs, mm -hmm. probably 
the thing that we would love to have first off is the unique voice. Right. It is hearing a song and you go, oh my goodness, who is that person? I, I mean, listen to that voice. And then immediately because of the tone of the voice or style of song, mm-hmm. you're like, oh, I've got to get this, you know, to this person who's a trailer person or yeah. this person who does this certain TV show or this voice would be great for ads. Um, so that's the voice is what everybody is wanting, of course. Yeah. Um, but then it's the production. Mm-hmm. Um, songs that we receive should be fully produced. Yes, I feel like this is something that people need <laughs> <Fully> to know. <laughs> and they need to be mastered, but not not by someone like Carrie Underwood's, you know, mastering guy up in the state of Maine that I can't even tell you how much it charges no. per song. <laughs> but just, you know, any of those programs, there's a, a one called like Launder, I think it's called yeah. something like that. There's all kinds that are on online that you can find and, yeah. you know, and get you know, to your Pro Tools. And, yeah. and they're not expensive. No. Or find somebody who has them and they're not going to charge you very much to master up the song. No, it's but it's very important that yeah. the vocal and the the instrumentation is is very balanced and clean clean very clean and then you look for instrumentals as well and mm-hmm. we are not as washington street publishing is known in the world of sync uh it is not known for instrumental cues mm-hmm. they call us like a boutique library because we just have indie artists and bands yeah. um every now and then we'll take some cues from from some people mm-hmm especially if they're like scores for that would fit uh, some of those TV shows like um, oh, Crown and yeah. Rain and, you know, the ones that sh- panoramic views or Outlander, you yeah. know, those kind. We'll try to find some of those that we can submit sometimes, but we don't actually hire composers to do that. Yeah. Um, and we're also known as a, a one-stop. Yes, explain that to people because so many people don't know what that is. We chose to do this because we wanted to have a small catalog so we really knew our people. Yeah. But to help out the music supervisors, especially music supervisors in TV, um, they need songs quickly, all the time. There are like 400 and some shows now on all the different varieties of major networks and streaming and cable, you name it, you Mm -hmm. know, social media. So... They they sometimes need a song, you know, that afternoon in three hours. We get calls like that. Oh, my goodness, they've moved the baby shower from the garden here into this restaurant. So now we can't use the lullaby thing. We've got to have a new song. And it's 2 o'clock when they contact us, and they need it by 5. That's so amazing. So what it means then is when we get your songs, and we love your songs, mm-hmm. and we check out the writers and who owns the publish, I mean the master, and the master means who paid for the song to be recorded. It's yeah. a sound recording. Uh, and the sync is who owns the copyright to the song. The sync is owned by the writers. Yes. And they still have their own publishing. Yeah. So it makes it easy for us. Mm-hmm. Um, so we just have to get contracts with all the writers or whoever owns the sync and then whoever owns the, the master recording. Um, and when we have that, and we know that these people that own those have done work for hires with all of their musicians and their art, their vocalists, um, so that we know everyone's been paid, no one can claim any money right. from this point forward. And if all that's together, then I'll sign my name to your contract, yeah. <laughs> and we can move forward. And once that happens, you know, then your song is in our catalog, and um, the music supervisors know we're a one-stop. Every now and then we have found songs that can only be a two-stop. One of the co-writers is with a major publishing house, mm-hmm. and we have, you know, decided that we think this song is valuable enough that we would go ahead and take it. But we have to tell the supervisors it's a two-stop. Mm-hmm. And often you get them, we've done something like that yeah. together, actually, where it, it, you had to get permission from the other publisher and you got written consent. I have. Ahead of time. And I know mm-hmm. a lot of people, um, I think that's such a valuable lesson because a lot of people that are songwriters, that are artists, want their music placed in film and television. Mm-hmm. And these are questions that 
really. I have mm-hmm. probably a hundred like direct messages and emails of people that ask, and I feel like you say the same thing over and over. Mm-hmm. So this is helpful to hear from somebody right. that owns the publishing and mm-hmm. and and is working as a licensing company to mm-hmm. explain like these are necessary steps. You know, there's there's a formula. I think exactly. Yeah. And 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 so if it, if the company is a small publishing company, sometimes though they will work with us. Yeah. And they'll let us go ahead and rep, and we you know do special contracts with them. Um, and, and the songwriters are thrilled. Yeah. I will say this. The music supervisors love cover tunes. Yes, and they do. And Hannah's been involved working with the, some covers from yeah. a major company right now. And cover tunes are great. Mm-hmm. And we will pitch cover tunes. But we will pitch them if we know they can be cleared. Right. Um, anyone that's an artist can go out and make a you know copy of a cover song Mm -hmm. and they can put it on their album. All you have to do is get a a license, you know, from, it used to be Harry Fox and now it's called Songpile. Yes. (laughs) But you pay, I don't, $50 or something, just random, um, and get a license to put it on your album or use it somehow, but it's called a mechanical license. But if you are going to want that song in the TV show or in the film, it is, it is, totally different. It goes into (laughs) broadcast licensing and broadcast licensing and sync licensing means whoever owns the publishing on that song, the sync, has to approve of you putting your vocal and making a new, new recording, a new master. And if it's someone who is like the Rolling Stones, (laughs) <laughs> they are owned by a company up in New York City. <laughs> which you just had to deal which with Which I this. just had yeah. to deal with, with that because of one of our clients. Uh, and they have a committee that listens to the song that's been recorded, and they vote on whether or not they like the recording, and they will tell you pretty much right off the bat. It's like the American Idol of approval. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know. And, and then, they, then they'll say, well, you know, we can go forward. And by going forward, they mean... When the, when the music supervisor gives me the brief and I say, I've got the best cover song, you will love this, and can I, you know, send covers? And they'll say, if you've gotten it approved. And I can say, yes, I have talked to the owners of the publishing and they've said yes. And so then at that point, it's a two-stop. Mm-hmm. I would have control over the master and then they have to go and deal with the the owners of the publishing yeah. company for the Rolling Stones or Paul Simons or the Beatles or whoever. And... Uh, the negotiations for the fees of those is going to be a lot higher right. than if it was just a regular song by by songwriters yeah. and not a famous band or artist. Yeah. But we still do it. We've worked together on mm-hmm. things, a um, little something called a brief, which some people are like, what is a brief? And they think that exists oh, like in true. an office world. But can you... Um, walk people through what that is like mm-hmm. to start on a project from like conception or uh, to completion. Um, when you're writing, you get scripts right. from from actual companies. And so mm-hmm. you're writing for the show specifically. Right. And you everything from contracting writers to overseeing production, can you kind of walk mm-hmm. us through what that is right. like for you? The briefs are, are sent from the music supervisors and they are... Um, in, in usually in red, uh, at the bottom, it will say end of day, yeah. E-O-D. And actually, if it says 5 o'clock and it's from California, then it means 7 o'clock Nashville. So we're like, oh, great, we got two extra hours on this yeah. one, you know. Or it could be an ad um, search, and they might give you a couple days, two or three days, which in that case, writers could try to write the song. Mm-hmm. If it's an ad, they'll describe the product, uh, in in some detail, and then the creative team at the ad agency has decided with the client owner what genre of music is going to sell this product best. Mm-hmm. So they'll tell you specifically what they're looking for. And then they'll usually give you examples, which is so helpful. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they'll they'll probably give a maximum of about four. If it's going for a whole season, if we get the brief you know, in advance for a whole season of a show, yeah. they may have 10, 12 uh, songs for you to listen to and try to find similar sounds. Also, if it's an ad, we'll get a brief and it'll say, 
Oh, so just an example would be like a cereal. And you're, yeah. you're used to seeing those and the mom's in the kitchen and the kids are running around. They've got to go to school and they're sitting up, you know, trying to eat their cereal. And, and so the music obviously is going to be pleasant and light and happy and whatever, yeah. that mood. But they may say they want the song to, especially in the chorus of the song, to have certain words. Yeah. You know, like good day, happy, makes me smile, whatever. And they'll give us anywhere from six or seven or 20 different words to look for yeah. that will fit that scene. And so we have to take those seriously mm -hmm. and try to follow exactly what they want. The worst thing to do is send songs to these people <laughs> that have nothing to do with those four samples they gave you or you don't have any of those words in your chorus because um, you probably won't be given a brief again. No, 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 <laughs> you, no. You won't. <laughs> it's like, I wanted to write something, Adele. I was just feeling it today, and the ad company is like, uh, hey, no, yeah. don't ever call us, and we won't ever call you. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but the briefs are so helpful. Yeah. And sometimes if it's for the whole season, uh, because it's maybe the fourth season of that show, and they know they use, say, instrumental rock cues throughout because they're in a lot of different bars and they just want in the background because yeah. their cast is always together talking like this yeah. and they don't want you to miss a word of yes. <laughs> whatever gossip or, or problem, you know, like in Friends, you yes. know, that's been going on in their life. So it's background music. Yeah. And so you'll know that in advance. And if it's eight episodes or 10 episodes, then that's great. We just have to go on a ma mass search. The briefs are valuable. Yeah. They're valuable, but they are um, they're private. Yeah. They're not supposed to be, you know, sent out to a million people in an email blast. You know, it's, it's to the person they have trusted to try to get the music to them directly. So, yeah. Um, that's the one thing people have to understand. They go, why don't you send us the briefs? And I'm like, what? Well, Cause I can't, it says that this is confidential, right? right. In bold, right at the very beginning. You right. Know? I think it's important for people to know when you're an artist or a songwriter, you're part of a a project, mm -hmm. you are not the project manager. That's sort of your mm -hmm. arena. And so when you have time, and obviously like notice when it's for an entire season, do you put together entire teams of people? You obviously probably try to pull from the library first. Right. But are there instances where you've created especially for that? And then how do you choose um, the artist's and the production team for that. Because I know you've gone to sessions before and literally sat there while they recorded and been a part of the writing as well. If we get a, a situation like that, um, my creative director, Queenie Mullenix, mm -hmm. uh, knows our catalog left and right. She does. She does. <laughs> and she's an amazing yeah. sound production person. She's been in the studio as a, a writer artist herself. But uh, her husband's been um, a major session player um, all his life. And yeah. so she is very attuned to sound and perfection. <laughs> and so um, she knows the catalog. So if we get uh, these kind of briefs where they are starting to tell you what each episode of the season is going to be like. Yeah. Uh, and they're going to need the main actor to have this kind of music or this uh, this actress is going to be surrounded by this, or you know, this is going to happen to them in the, the process of this season. She will call me and we'll talk and try to pull together the names of the people we think fit those genres of songs. Right. And we will contact them and give them the information so that they can have time to just get together and write as much as they possibly can. Right. And that way we can just start pitching and put in folders, you know, to the music supervisor, this is what we think would fit so-and-so, the guy, and this is the girl, and this is a new woman in this show, or this is whatever, you know, you just kind of narrow it down so yeah. it makes it easier on the, on the supervisor. I think something I want to, I thought was an interesting thing to ask in, these, in this, because we all have things that we love, mm -hmm. but I think there are also cons, and I think a lot of times people don't talk about them, both sort of the parallel. So in your particular field, are there any cons to what you do, like days that you're just like, this is the part of my job that I just hate? <laughs> <laughs> right. There's a lot of great things, yeah. especially when it works, 
we go through a lot of waiting. You have to have a lot of patience. Yeah. Uh, because you're throwing out all these songs and then you're waiting. And then you might get a, a you know, call back and they'll say, do you still have the song? Yes, right. I do. And okay, then, you know, the next step is you send the, the, um, the uh, WAV file and... Um, so then you're like, oh, okay, this is serious. Because yeah. now the music editor is going to take it and start yeah. chopping it up and fitting it in the scene. Yeah. And then you'll get a call back and you'll say, okay, now it's time to lock in. Yeah. So it's it's there. We're just waiting for the final lock in, which means the director and producers and the editors have sat down, watched the whole scene. It all fits perfectly. And the director, producers say, okay, lock in these songs. So at that point, it's the best of my job. Because yeah. I get to call people and go, we just got your song placed in such and such. Which is such the a con is <laughs> <laughs> The con is, yeah. that scene is on the floor of the film editor's room. We've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm so sorry, but, you know, we've been waiting on this for three months, but it didn't lock in. Yeah. And they pulled the song or they replaced it with something else. And it's just... You know, it's so sad, you know, because you just counted on that and you wanted it so badly yeah. for people. Even though I love what I do, it just energizes me. Every morning I get up and I start working early, but um, it's 24-7 because the supervisors are in a various worlds. The film world, which takes forever. The, you know, TV world, which is, they're on you all the time. And, you know, it's just, we we'll get sometimes, you know, 12 briefs a day, you yeah. know, and you're just like, oh my gosh, there's no way we can do this, you know. Right. Um, and then a, the, there's a time difference, you know. Sometimes they're from England and sometimes there's this woman in Australia or uh, just California and it's, you know, the phone's ringing at 1030 on a Saturday night and it's like, do you still have that, that you know, um, song, that hip hop song by so-and-so and, you know, we're going to put it in. I just have to make sure and I, you know, I hang up and go, <laughs> Is it 10.30 on a Saturday night? Call, call up Queenie. <laughs> hey, were you sleeping? I You're know, not now. <laughs> I know. We got one one night, you know, it was 11 o'clock, and they wanted to know if I had Sarah's, you know, yeah. lyric for her song. Yeah. And I'm like, really? Can I do it in the morning? Or you know, I wanted to say that, but you don't. But you don't. No, you just no, do the, no, do no. the oh, task. No, that's fine. I, I'll shoot it to you in just a minute. Yeah. So yeah. that part of it, it's hard. Life is, is all about balance. And so if you're in this industry, it's something you have to make a priority. You have to realize that you can't exist in that kind of a world for long without having damaged yourself and your right. relationships and everything that's important in life. So, yeah. So you have to think of, you know, how much time can I do this? How much time can I put with the family and closest of friends and and what am I doing to my body? Yeah. <laughs> Got to exercise and, and, you know, your mind, your, your creative mind and uh, reading books and getting exposed to art or whatever it is that, you know, you, you need uh, for knowledge. And, um, and then your spirit, you know, spiritual time, meditate or church or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, you've got to find balance. You, would you say that's one of the biggest pitfalls that people really struggle with? just in life, but definitely in the mm -hmm. entertainment business. Probably so. Yeah. I really do. I, I agree. know in the music supervisor world. I've been with some supervisors, and I think I have a lot of emails. Yeah. Like, you know, 5,000 or so sitting <laughs> on one of my sites. <laughs> and 3,000 in the phone, you know. And then I'll talk to somebody, like the guy that's, I won't say, it's, well, I guess uh, Robert Jordan is, Fox. Yeah, he's yeah, wonderful. Sports. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and I, and he, we were comparing, you know, one time recently, and and he had forty five hundred on his phone on the one site, and I was like, okay, you beat me. I yeah, know. you feel like you're but, an under underachiever in right. the world of email oh my recipients. Gosh. And yeah. the most was like this major uh, uh, music soup and uh, for film and stuff, and she had eleven thousand and something. Oh my god! I just goodness. looked at her and said, well, yeah, "There's no way," and she goes, "I know." But I try. And right. you do. You try. You know, people just have to understand it's, it's just that kind of a world. And no matter how many interns and creative directors, you know, it's, it's a lot of emails. I love that you said, but I try. But I think that's Dude. such a good phrase to mm -hmm. carry when you're working because give it your all, give it your right. best. But 
you tried mm-hmm. and you are human. I am. And yeah. some some of those emails slip through and, and I just, all I can do is apologize because yeah. I can't get to all of them. Yeah. No matter how hard I try. Stay tuned for part two of our interview with Nancy as we discuss how her work helps songwriters, singers, and musicians get their work out to the general public. <laughs> 